Millions of cars pass over them or under them every single day. The Bay Area has nearly 4,000 bridges, and without them, our commute and economy would virtually grind to a halt. But are they safe? Senior investigative reporter Stephen Stock made some troubling discoveries. We obtain government bridge inspection records covering all 25,000 bridges here in California. When we crunched the numbers, we discovered almost 500 bridges here in the Bay Area were determined by experts to be structurally deficient. That's the same rating given to that bridge that collapsed over the Mississippi River back in 2007. It's the video that's still hard to watch even eight years after it happened. The span of Interstate 35W crossing the Mississippi River in Minneapolis collapses without warning. Cars still driving across it back in August 2007, sending 13 people to their death and injuring another 145. A bridge in America just shouldn't fall down. That bridge had been rated by government engineers as structurally deficient and categorized as needing replacement. From the 101 split. The 280 interchange. On the 101 we found hundreds of structurally deficient bridges here in the Bay Area, some rated structurally worse than that Minneapolis bridge. Yet cars continue to use these same bridges every day. Well, yeah, of course it's too high. Malcolm Dartery is the director at California's Department of Transportation, or Caltrans. It is an alarm bell. It is something to pay attention to because it needs to be addressed. It does not mean it's not safe for the traveling public to go over it. According to the most recent U.S. Department of Transportation data from 2013, engineers rated 472 Bay Area bridges as structurally deficient, meaning some of the bridge's core structures need repair or replacement. These problematic bridges span the entire Bay Area, including the Richmond I-580 bridge over San Pablo Bay, 280 at Wolf Road in Cupertino, State Route 13 over 580 in Berkeley, I-680 over Monument Boulevard in Walnut Creek. Both the US-101 off-ramp and the interchange between US-101 and 280 in San Francisco. Look, I am concerned about the condition of the bridges. If I had a reason to be concerned about the public using the bridges, I would close down the bridges. And we've actually gotten to that point. About half of these 472 problematic bridges are in such poor shape that engineers put them on a list to be replaced, yet they remain open for traffic. Some of these bridges carrying more than 200,000 cars every day. Well, today we're already behind the curve because we haven't made a significant change in how we invest in transportation for about 20 years, whether you're talking about the federal side or the state side. This bridge right here. We visited many of the bridges on this list. We walked over them, right there. took a closer look under them. So this is Marina Boulevard. A few of the bridges had been repaired or replaced, but most clearly haven't. While we aren't experts, some of the problems were visible. Exposed rusted rebar, chunks of concrete missing from the substructure cracks where main supports hold the bridge up. When you take a look at some of these bridges at first glance, they don't seem so bad, but look closer. For instance here, that's bare rusting rebar under a support for a bridge. This bridge happens to be carrying Interstate 880 in Oakland. Caltrans estimates that it will cost $57 billion to get these bridges and roads in California back to where they need to be, plus another 3 to $5 billion every year for maintenance. We fall short each and every year. Congressman Jared Huffman represents much of Marin County in Washington. He also serves on the U.S. House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. He wants Congress to step up and better fund bridge maintenance and replacement now. We've seen what happens when you neglect these uh, structurally deficient designations for year after year after year, eventually things begin to fail. And uh, I don't want that to happen uh, in my district or in anyone else's. It's going to be difficult. It's going to take some real leadership coming out of Washington, D.C. to really think outside of the box, to have a long-term solution. Republican Congressman Jeff Denham, who represents the Modesto area, also serves on the U.S. House Transportation Committee. After we shared our data analysis with both congressmen, they said they will push harder for more bridge funding in Congress.
Yeah, the American public should be very concerned uh, about the uh, long-term viability of our highway system as well as our bridges. When you've got a bridge that is rated at a two out of a hundred, um, people should be nervous about uh, traveling across it. Hit less potholes. Caltrans director emphasizes that while these ratings are not good news, he says the low numbers do not necessarily mean these bridges are unsafe. He does say if engineers think a bridge is becoming unsafe, they will put weight limits and restrict traffic on it the first step before closing the bridge altogether. Those ratings are certainly alarming and they need to be addressed, but again, if it were unsafe, we wouldn't keep it open. No hesitation. Oh, no hesitation, no hesitation. We've broken all this data down on our website. You can find a list of all the bridges, plus definitions of what these ratings mean. Just go to NBCBayArea.com. I'm Stephen Stock, NBC Bay Area News. All right.